is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Eight seven seven three eight one three eight one one eight seven seven three eight one three eight one one. Man, we have a ton to do here. No time for screwing around. I watched that debate last night on Fox. Hannity was fantastic, and so was DeSantis. DeSantis crushed Newsom. wasn't even a close call, and you know why? Because DeSantis came prepared. DeSantis was like Machine Gun Kelly, just one fact after another after another. And you can see from time to time Newsom's phony smile turned into a frown. And he would panic with the name calling. And he would lie repeatedly. I mean, I was online. I was checking book banning. 1,405 books. And I looked, no, slightly over 300. Uh, and they listed the books, and the books were all crap. Vast majority of them were pornographic. So, first of all, the number is even irrelevant if it's 10 million books, because they're all penthouse type books for little kids. They ought to be banned. When it comes to abortion, DeSantis locked in Newsom for all time. Newsom supports abortion right up to birth. The American people do not support that. Newsom does not support parental notification. How do we know that? Because he said nothing when he was directly asked three times by Hannity. And then he talks about, you know, our taxes, uh, yeah, it's a high rate, but for the wealthy and so forth. It's not the wealthy alone who are escaping California. It's hardworking Americans. It's pensioners. It's people who are third, fourth, fifth generation to get the hell out of there. It's a 0% income tax across the board in Florida. 0%. But when it comes to the kitchen table issues, food, when it comes to issues like energy, the cost of gasoline, you're getting killed in California. It's the highest in the country. Why doesn't he take credit for it? Why isn't he proud of it? But in any event, I'm not going to redo the debate. I think DeSantis did himself a lot of good, particularly vis-a-vis Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is out there at the billionaire trough, slopping it up as fast as she can. Getting backed by liberals, getting backed by Democrats, getting backed by open border types, by radical columnists, by bushies. What's that all about? And I want to apologize. I was wrong. Nikki Haley is not George W. Bush in a dress. She's a complete and utter chameleon on every major issue. Whether it's China, whether it's the border, whether it's Disney, whether it's drilling, whatever it is. She's had five positions on the same issue. And when you catch her on it, her debate style is to interrupt, to deny, and to attack. Interrupt, deny, and attack. And that's why last night's debate was so good. You could have some of that, but one-on-one, you really do expose yourself, as Newsom did. So I think DeSantis really hurt Newsom. 
I really do. And uh, I also think that Hannity was fantastic. That's the kind of debate you want, right? So we'll watch the next debate. Who keeps interrupting? You're going to find out who keeps interrupting. It's going to be Nikki Haley attacking Ramaswamy. She's spending millions and millions of dollars, not attacking Trump, but attacking DeSantis. Then you got the, uh, the Hindenburg on the stage there, filled with gas. The gas bag. Chris Christie, who is sort of the Liz Cheney of the bunch. By the way, she has a book coming out. You watch every single major network will be promoting it. Why? Because she's a poison pill for the Republicans. That's why. I want to read you something. This is very, very important. Not just the substance, but something I'm going to point out. First of all, see if you can catch it. You're really smart out there. Really, really, you're the smartest audience of all audiences. And I mean that when I say that, or you wouldn't be here. Why waste your time? But I want you to listen to this. This is a New York Times article that came out last evening when I was on air, so I didn't see it, didn't have time to read it, 7.16 p.m. Eastern, by Ronan Bergman and Adam Goldman. Ready for this? Israeli officials obtained Hamas's battle plan for the October 7 terrorist attack more than a year before it happened. Documents, emails, and interviews show. But Israeli military and intelligence officials dismissed the plan as aspirational, considering it too difficult for Hamas to carry out. Now let me tell you what the New York Times did. The Jerusalem Post has written two stories on this. So the New York Times decides to leapfrog the Jerusalem Post, gives them no credit whatsoever, and goes and does a bunch of interviews on their own. Fine, but I just want you to understand how this has worked. They say the approximately 40-page document, which the Israeli authorities codenamed Jericho Wall, outlined point by point exactly the kind of devastating invasion that led to the deaths of about 1,200 people, writes the Slimes. Stick with me. The translated document, which was reviewed by the New York Slimes, did not set a date for the attack, but described a methodical assault designed to overwhelm the fortifications around the Gaza Strip, take over Israeli cities and storm key military bases, including a division headquarters. Hamas followed the blueprint with shocking precision. The document called for a barrage of rockets at the outset of the attack, drones to knock out the security cameras and automated machine guns along the border, and gunmen to pour into Israel and Mas in paragliders, on motorcycles, and on foot, all of which happened on October 7th. The plan also included details about the location and size of Israeli military forces, communication hubs, and other sensitive information raising questions about how Hamas gathered its intelligence and whether there were leaks inside the Israeli security establishment. Stay with me. I'm almost there. The article goes on, but I just want to stop it at the point that, to me, I need to emphasize, because nobody else will. Ready? The documented, the documents circulated widely among Israeli military and intelligence leaders, but experts determined that an attack of that scale and ambition was beyond Hamas's capabilities. According to documents and officials, it is unclear whether Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or other top political leaders saw the document as well. What's wrong with this article? What's wrong with this article? They say, at the front end of this, that the battle plan for October 7 terrorist attack was more than a year in the making before it happened. So that precedes October 7, 2022. That precedes October 7, 2022, a year before the attack on October 7, 2023. They also say that the, the document in the intelligence was known more than a year before the attack. So again... It precedes October 7, 2022. 
And then five or six paragraphs down, as I read to you, they were they, it's unclear whether Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or other top political leaders saw the document as well. According, by the way, to the Jerusalem Post stories, it's very unlikely that top government officials saw it because at the relatively senior intelligence level, they, dis- they dismissed much of it and they didn't have enough exactitude with respect to the date. But putting that aside just for the moment, that's not the point of this article. Benjamin Netanyahu was not the prime minister when this document came out. He was not the prime minister, quote, more than a year before it happened. That is the attack on October 7th, 2023. In fact, he wasn't able to organize a government until December 29th, 2022. December 29th, 2022. Nowhere in this article, certainly not at the front end, do they say, well, we don't know whether the acting, the prime minister at the time, Bennett, and the coalition government with Lapid and Gantz, that is Bennett, Lapid, and Gantz, what did they know? Since they ran the government and Bennett was the prime minister. A year well before the October 7 attacks. In other words, what did the left-wing government in Israel know when this information was supposedly being pulled together? The document was created? You have to assume the senior intel and IDF appointees, Mossad appointees, were the appointees either made by the left-wing Israeli government or left there by the left-wing Israeli government. There's not a word about them. Not a word about them. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, because the New York Times and the rest of the media in America and much of the media in Israel want to put Netanyahu in prison, like Trump, never wanted him elected, Never wanted him to pull together the coalition government. They attacked the other parties as radical right-wing religious types. Netanyahu and his coalition is constantly, unceasingly, obsessively attacked by the New York Times and Thomas Friedman. By the Biden regime. Before that, the Obama regime. Because Netanyahu represents his people. And Ehud Barach, a disgraced, former, disastrous prime minister of the hard left, who's been campaigning in America, even now as I speak, during the war, and was involved in raising dark money and organizing a coup against Netanyahu in the prior Netanyahu government for two years. He's all over TV, he's all over the newspapers, here and in Europe. Gantz gets a complete pass, even though he was part of that government. Now he's part of the the war government. Lapid is a leftist, a former TV announcer. A leftist who's not part of the war cabinet because he can't be trusted. He's been to the United States trying to undermine their commander-in-chief, Netanyahu, as well. We have liberal Democrats on cable, even some as guests or hosts on MSNBC, CNN, and Fox. So when this October 7th is brought up, they immediately start attacking Netanyahu. Why? Because I have another piece I want to read to you very shortly. It was in the Financial Times. And here again, the... NBC News took the story this gentleman wrote and used it as the basis of gathering other information. All, all these people in the media are just slime balls. They're sleazy. It's what they are. They don't do their own work. Completely sleazy. 
They don't give credit to anybody. It's what they were taught. It is unclear whether Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or other top political leaders saw the document. Why don't they ask him? But why don't they ask Bennett and Lapid and Gantz? Why don't they ask all of them? I even heard somebody who I have enormous respect for on cable TV said Netanyahu's future is over. Well, he's at like 17 or 20 percent or 30 percent or something like that. Because about every two or three days there's an article blaming him. Now, I'm not blaming anyone and I'm not not blaming anyone. You're in the middle of a war when they Japanese hit Pearl Harbor. There wasn't discussion about what did FDR know and when did he know it. Media certainly wasn't thinking that way. 9-11, what did George W. Bush know and when did he know it. That's not the way you do things. But I'm not done with this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold. It's weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k and you want to diversify with physical gold, you can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, LEVIN to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Joe Scarborough, before I get to the other article, which kind of exposes some of what's going on here. I've told you before, he is a disgusting, low IQ demagogue. Always has been, always will be. Which is exactly why he's over at MSNBC, which is filled with people like this. Filled with them. MSNBC is the little sister of NBC, and they're both owned by Comcast. Many of you are paying, overpaying, an enormous amount of money for Comcast, which is a Philadelphia-based corporation run by woke corporatists. And, of course, nobody will ever do a story on them, and that's why a lot of these woke corporatists buy these media outlets to protect themselves. That's why Bezos bought the Washington Post. You never see stories about Amazon, do you, in the Washington Post? But I want you to listen to what Scarborough says based on this article, which he doesn't read carefully, and how close to the line of a full-fledged bigot and anti-Semite he becomes. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k and you want to diversify with physical gold, you can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. Again, LEVIN, to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Liberty's Voice, Mark LEVIN. Talk with that voice now, 877-381-3811. On MSNBC, they have a significant number of 
anti-Semites, who pretend not to be anti-Semites, but they are, just as Obama is and was an anti-Semite. There's no question about it, and I'll demonstrate it again as I have over the many, many years I've been behind this microphone. Professor Khalidi, Columbia, the video that's never been shown, that the LA Times continues to conceal, there's so much. But I want to focus on American media. American media, MSNBC's turn, and Joe Scarborough. Joe Scarborough gets a lot of hits because he's on early in the morning. He says crazy-ass things. He's a Trump hater. And so all the Democrat Party websites and others pick up on it. Mika Brzezinski's father, Zbigniew Brzezinski, was another Israel hater. As he advised Jimmy Carter from the National Security Council, just another contemptible thug. But I want you to listen to Scarborough. Now you have some facts, but I want to give you more information once I'm done with him about the article itself. The article itself dates this information and the document months before Netanyahu and his government were even elected, let alone organized. And the Jerusalem Post articles, both of them that I read in the course of the last 72 hours, which were really the first to break this information, make it abundantly clear that the information per se got caught up in the bureaucracy, got caught up in debates, challenges from experts within the Israeli military. The initial information was collected by a woman who wasn't even really a full-time intel person for Mossad. And so they started to dismiss her. She pulls the information together. She doesn't have a date. The information is taken. It's analyzed. The head of intel for Israel has already said he is going to resign or has resigned. And there's no information whatsoever that this information got to the heads of either of the governments. Either Bennett, Lapid, and Gantz, or Netanyahu and his coalition. But for some reason, Bennett, Lapid, and Gantz escape all scrutiny. Even though the information was bubbling around during their government. A year before October 7th. Netanyahu wasn't even an announced candidate yet. Now listen to this ignoramus and this tirade about the West Bank. They use the term West Bank because the more Orthodox Jews, not all, tend to live in Judea and Samaria, the indigenous homeland of Judaism. They want to take Judea and Samaria, they always have on the left, the Democrat Party, and give it to the Palestinians to take pressure off of Jordan, pressure off of Egypt, with the claim that this would be a two-state solution. And the radical left in Israel agrees with them. Just as we have our radical left, they do too. That's led by Ehud Blach and the left-wing parties in Israel. So Menachem Begin wanted nothing to do with that, so they would attack him. And now, of course, it's Netanyahu. So listen to this tirade. Cut to go. And let me add, you look at the chaos in the West Bank that I lay all at the feet of Benjamin Netanyahu and his policies over the past 10 years. You see, People- ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Carter was big new Brzezinski. Her daddy kept insisting that, quote unquote, the West Bank be delivered to the Palestinians. They had their eyes on the West Bank. Got to give them the West Bank. Which, of course, when you use that phraseology, it shows, number one, complete ignorance, and number two, that you obviously hate the state of Israel because there is no West Bank of Jordan anymore. They controlled it for 19 years. That's it. When they took it during the 1948 war for independence. Go ahead. 
I didn't blame his policies for the attack in Gaza, but the chaos in the West Bank that threatens any peace process moving forward and also threatens another, a second front in this war, possibly a third front in this war. What is he talking about? Not any time during this diatribe, you'll notice, does he blame the Palestinian terrorists, the Iranian terrorists, the Hezbollah terrorists, the PLO, Arafat's creation, Arafat's baby, Abbas, who's a terrorist, Joe Scarborough is going full Thomas Friedman and full Barack Obama. And he's an ignoramus, complete moron. But it doesn't matter. He talks about Netanyahu the way he talks about Trump. This guy has a serious mental problem. He really does. Go ahead. The United States has the right to say, if we're going to continue propping up your government, if you don't have faith in Stop this right guy. There. Stop right there. The United States is propping up the Israeli government? How is the United States propping up the Israeli government? Joe Scarborough wouldn't talk this way about a genocidal maniac in any part of the world. You would, you're propping up the Israeli government? Let me tell this dumb bastard a little secret. In the war for independence, the Israelis didn't get any help from the United States. None. Other than citizens, when they could, illegally sending weapons, Jews in the United States. But it was illegal in the United States. They didn't get support from anybody. Nobody. The British were their enemy. Nobody. Nobody talks about propping up these people have been fighting and fighting and fighting for their right to survive and their right to have their own government the right to live in their indigenous homeland that goes back four thousand damn years and this son of a bitch goes on about how our government is propping up their government what a disgrace They're allies. They're providing support to Israel. And they should. Because our government under Joe Biden, prior to that under Barack Obama, under Blinken of both presidencies, has blown up the Middle East. They funded Iran. They rearmed Iran to the tune of $100 billion. They paid Iran for our hostages. Hundreds of millions of dollars of your tax dollars funneled through the UN to go to Hamas. Hundreds of millions of your tax cut parents going to the PLO, another terrorist organization. And this son of a bitch goes on about we're propping up the government in Israel. He would never talk that way about another country. Ever. Ever. He's playing to the anti-Semites at his network. He's playing to the anti-Semites who watch their program to get ratings. That's what he's doing. He's a disgusting disgrace. The West Bank. Our government is now building a database of Jews in the West Bank that they say are violent when they're defending themselves against Hamas, which has secreted itself now into Judea and Samaria. I told you about this tiny little town named Shiloh. Joe Scarborough has no knowledge about it. Maybe he'll Google it now. He knows nothing about the history of this region. Zero. It's in Judea and Samaria. Maybe you've heard of Samuel. Samuel.
one of the most important figures in Judaism. If you ever do go to Israel, you should check out this tiny little place, Shiloh, spelled like Shiloh. And the history there. Now the various Jewish tribes came together. The separate tribes came together right there. It predates the city of David, which predates the city of Jerusalem. Under the Obama plan, under the Ehud Barak plan, under the Biden plan, the Blinken plan, the Joe Scarborough plan, that will be handed over to the Palestinians. Why? Because Netanyahu says no. Because Netanyahu says this isn't a land situation. This is an Islamist ideology problem. Ideology. They want a caliphate. And it's not just Israel. They fight each other. They kill each other. We had a test run. We gave them Gaza. Gaza never belonged to the Israelis or to the Palestinians. It was Egyptian. They said, okay, here, take this. And what did they do? They turned it into a terror center. And so Joe Scarborough goes on a rant. He's an ignoramus. He goes on a rant. He doesn't even understand what the hell's going on. But he understands what people want to hear on the radical, hard, anti-Semitic left. And so he feeds it to them. Go ahead, Mr. Producer. Who knew this was coming a year away? We need a better partner. And Benjamin Netanyahu is not that partner. When now do listen we get- to this. Listen to this. More than a year away, Benjamin Netanyahu was not the prime minister. This guy is so unhinged, so illiterate, so stupid, that he doesn't even carefully read the article. The New York Times is feeding lies, pushing out propaganda. We don't know what Netanyahu knew. Well, who knew what more than a year ago? In the government that preceded the Netanyahu government. What did Bennett know? What did Lapid know? What did Gantz know? He doesn't care. He doesn't know. We got to get rid of Netanyahu because he's defending the homeland of the Jewish people. We got to get rid of him. Right, Mika? Yes, yes, that's right. Blinken says so. Yes, he's great. Biden, oh, yes, he's a moderate. I'm not done. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold. It's weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k, Do you want to diversify with physical gold? You can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. Again, LEVIN, to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text data and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. I'm not done with this. I'm not going to have enough time to sum it all up in the next segment. I'll carry it over to the next hour, but there's a number of things I want to get to, including as all these issues are swirling around, life and death issues, issues that are crucial The constant effort by the Democrats dressed up as judges to take out Donald Trump is not ending. It's never ending. They are destroying separation of powers. They're destroying the presidency. They're destroying the Constitution in due process. And in the United States Senate, the Senate Judiciary Committee, led by little Dick Durbin, who is a contemptible little bum. Fred Thompson told me about this guy. He's dishonorable. He's destroying the independence of the Supreme Court. He's destroyed the 
United States Senate and the subpoena process in the judiciary. He has shut down Republican objections. He's cut off Republican speech. He's destroyed the procedures in the United States Senate's Judiciary Committee. And these people don't give a damn. While they're talking about democracy and following the rules and Trump is Hitler and everybody else is a dictator and they want to defend democracy, these Lilliputians are destroying our country in every respect. They are a cancer that is metastasizing every second of every day. Stick with me, folks. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Joe Scarborough, last week said that Donald Trump wanted to imprison people and execute them. Still keeps his job. Joe Scarborough today, who not only gets all his information wrong and, all, and not only demonstrates what a complete buffoon he is, but look how he goes after the only Jewish state on the face of the earth. That we're propping up that government. No, Joe, we're propping up Hamas. We're propping up the Islamo-Nazi regime in Tehran. We're propping up the Palestinian Liberation Organization terrorist regime founded by Arafat. We're propping up the Saudi Arabian throwback monarchy by Biden's energy policies here in our own country. Now, all these other regimes, they murder, slaughter their own citizens gays, LGBTQ, people who don't agree with what they want them to wear, people who look in the wrong direction, people who are suspected, and they're murdered and tortured and killed in the worst possible way. But you see, but according to Joe Scarborough, it's Netanyahu and the West Bank, quote-unquote. That's the giveaway. And that the problem with Netanyahu and Lakut and all these right-wing nuts is they actually want to hold on to their territory. They want to hold on to their country. They want to hold on to their, their indigenous historical ancestral lands. That's a big problem, America. Go look at a map. Pull it up on your computer right now. Pull it up on your, your iPhone or whatever you have. Look how big Israel, a tiny speck in the Middle East. And Joe wants it to be smaller. Why? Because Biden does. Blinken does. Obama was. These are his new friends. Because Joe is a punk. That's why. So here's more of his projections onto the propping up of Israel, the propping up of Netanyahu. Netanyahu is a duly elected prime minister of a democratic state. Obama, Biden, the Democrat Party, and their media front mouthpieces have been trying to undo the duly elected leader of Israel. This time around, the last time around, and when he was duly elected under Obama, they've tried to sabotage his prime ministership, sabotage his coalition governments, because they want Iran to get a nuclear weapon. Because they want Iran to be rearmed. Because they want oil to flow into Iran. Because they have this insane ideology about bringing balance to the Middle East. Prop up. We're propping up the terrorists. We're propping up Iran. It's not Israel that's killed American soldiers. Many who've been horribly wounded that you see on TV commercials. Israel didn't do that. Netanyahu didn't do that.
Then he went on. Cut three. Go. It's not that they weren't taking it seriously. It's that they were focused on the West Bank for Netanyahu's yes. political survival. Because so stop has- right there. Notice they have the clapping. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Netanyahu's political survival. He's the longest serving prime minister in the history of the state of Israel. So they were focused on the West Bank, you see. That took Netanyahu's attention away from the growing evidence that Hamas was going to slaughter and commit atrocities against the Israeli people. What evidence does Joe Scarborough have for that? Nothing. Zero. Even the article he waves around from the Holocaust-denying New York Times, from the Hamas mouthpiece New York Times, provides him with a time that makes it clear that he wasn't even running a government at the time that this report was supposedly percolating up. And we also know what we don't know. That is, whether in fact this report did percolate or the information to Bennett, Lapid, and Gantz. Let alone Netanyahu. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the bigots. It doesn't matter to those who dis- try to character assassinate and smear individuals, which is one of Joe Scarborough's trades. It's one of his trades. And that's what stupid people do, who know no history, who don't have any grasp of reality, but they know how to jerk their knees. So Netanyahu, who wasn't ready because of his political survival, this is the line that's being put out there. And one day I'll address this in more detail, exactly what was going on in Israel. By the left in America, the left in Europe, the left in Israel, the millions that flowed in, in an effort backed by Obama, Ehud Barak, and the usual Marxist leftists. But let's go on. Go ahead. And he has to stay in power or he goes to jail. Listen to this. Listen to this. He's facing three indictments where he has to stay in power. He's going to jail. First of all, as a factual matter, in the United States, it's been decided that a sitting president cannot be indicted. I don't need to get into that in this round. That's not the case in Israel when it comes to prime ministers. Prime ministers can be indicted while in office in Israel. And they are removed. And so he says here, he's got a whole theory based on what the New York Times wrote. And he is willingly led by the nose. His nose is quite substantial. Why not? He gets his governments mixed up. Now he gets his countries mixed up. You can indict a sitting prime minister. In Israel. It has nothing to do with our Department of Justice's view of indicting a sitting president. So when he says here, he has three indictments and he has to stay in power or he goes to jail, that's a lie, number one. Number two, those indictments are falling apart. They've been falling apart. There have been witnesses who've testified. There's a judge who even suggested to the prosecution, why are you bringing this case? It's falling apart. But they still bring it. Why? Because radical left-wing prosecutors, whether they're in Israel or the United States, are the worst of the worst. That's why. But this is way over Joe's head and his pea brain. Go ahead. Paying attention to Gaza was politically inconvenient for him. Why was it politically inconvenient for him? Can anybody make sense of this? Why would it be politically inconvenient to pay attention to Gaza? Joe Scarborough doesn't have any idea what Netanyahu was doing, 
what his government was doing, what they were, were not paying attention to. But I can assure you, come Monday, when he's back on the air, with gastritis, and the fumes coming out of his nostrils, ears, and his mouth, he will not apologize, he will not correct, he will just keep at it. Because that's the nature of American journalism today. It isn't journalism. It's pontificating morons. If this guy were on a soapbox on a corner in San Francisco doing his rant, everybody would look at that nut. Stay away from him, honey. Don't get close to him. He looks very dangerous. He could be caring. We don't know. Stay away from him. But when he's given a platform like this and they dress him up and put a tie on him like a mannequin, Oh, we have to take him quite seriously. Go ahead. On the West Bank, helped him with his religious extremist settlers. Religious with extremist re- settlers. Why are the Jews in Judea and Samaria religious extremist settlers? And this is where his anti-Semitism comes in. Clearly not all the Jews in Judea and Samaria are Orthodox Jews, but many of them are. They're not extremists. They're practicing Jews who embrace the Torah. They're Jews, Orthodox Jews, like you'll find in Brooklyn, New York. Orthodox Jews, like you'll find in South Florida. They're Orthodox Jews, many of them. Not all of them, but many of them. So Joe Scarborough calls them religious extremist settlers. And why are they settlers? Why are they settlers? Are Native Americans settlers? When they live on the lands that their ancestors lived on? How can you be a settler in your own country? How can you be a settler on your own territory? How can you be a settler on your own land? Listen to the propaganda. Remember chapter 4, the Democrat Party hates America. The use of language. The changing of belief systems. The indoctrination. The repetition. That's what you get from this slug. And he doesn't even know he's doing it. He's just repeating it because he's stupid. He wants ratings. He wants money. That's it. They're not settlers. They're the indigenous people. They're not religious extremists. Not all, but many of them are Orthodox Jews. Go ahead. Extremist groups helped him stay in office, helped him stay out of jail. Let's be you clear. You are a sick SOB. And the fact that the corporatists at Comcast keep you on the air, the way you talk about Netanyahu, about tens of millions of people who support him, the way you try and inflame people by saying the most over the top outrageous things about. Trump's going to execute people. You bring on a former senator who says he's worse than, worse than Hitler. You're a disgrace. That whole network is pathetic. Up and down the line. Up and down the line. And then your, your attacks on the Jewish state, your attacks on Netanyahu, your attacks on Orthodox Jews in Judea and Samaria... Let me tell you something, pal. You're as close to crossing that line on anti-Semitism as anybody I've ever seen. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You 
You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trade-in necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Just listen to the way uh, these people on the left talk. They don't talk about American principles. No, it's always about them and their ideology. There is a piece in FT.com, Financial Times, by some leftist named Edward Luce, U.S. national editor and columnist. I want to read this to you. Try and ignore all the, you know, the, the, the stupid stuff. But here we go. An unexpected rift that has been brought out by the Israel-Gaza crisis is the passive aggression between Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Former aides to America's 44th president made it clear that they disapprove of how America's 46th president has been handling Israel since October 7th. Got to listen to this. If Obama were in charge, they say the U.S. would be putting conditions on military aid to Israel and calling out Benjamin Netanyahu's egregious failings. So you can see the words getting out among the Democrats, their media, the Joe Scarboroughs and all the rest that this is the Obama position. Obama is the invisible hand behind what's going on here. Blinken is originally uh, his deputy secretary of state. Sullivan worked with Obama too. Obama's calling the shots. And this is why you see all the anti-Semitism and all the hate Israel stuff. He goes, that is precisely the point. Biden's people reply, only by hugging Israel closely can America exercise leverage over its actions. Without Biden's embrace, there would be no temporary ceasefire, hostage prisoner exchange, or humanitarian aid getting through Gaza, they say. Let's see here. Leave Israel aside for a moment, he writes. No, I got to put this in here, too. I'm trying to cut to the chase. He says, I'm not sure former members of the Obama team are winning the argument. It is not as though Obama's criticisms of Netanyahu had any effect when he was president. Quite the reverse. Israeli settlements continue to expand, and Netanyahu broke all diplomatic protocol by giving a speech to U.S. Congress attacking Obama's nuclear deal when he was in the midst of negotiating it. That's right. Netanyahu actually represents his people and says he doesn't want Iran to get the nukes. He's supposed to sit there and shut up. Obama's in charge. My point is that there's not so much love lost between Obama and Biden. What he writes in here, too, is that Obama hates Netanyahu. That's his phrase. And he's talking to the Obama people. Obama hates Netanyahu because Netanyahu stands in the way of their designs. He's trying to protect his country. And these people hate Israel. Remember Khalidi? Remember I talked about him last night? Remember we played some of the audio? Professor Khalidi of Columbia, a history professor in the Middle East, the Edward Sayed seat. In my view, Israel haters and also Hamas mouthpieces. My point, he writes, is there's not much love lost between Obama and Biden. We're not for the fact that Donald Trump came in between their presidencies. We'd be focusing a lot more on what divides these two men. Some of it's personal. Biden felt disrespected as vice president. His advice was routinely ignored. Obama staffers did little to disguise that they saw Biden as someone who had to be tolerated rather than solicited. He's from a different generation and learned his politics in an era that seemed to have lost its relevance. Biden felt slighted. The friction between them was capped by Obama's preference for Hillary Clinton and so forth and go on. Some of their friction is also political. If you compare Obama's policy record to what Biden is doing, 
They're often on opposite sides. Obama doubled down on Afghanistan with his big troop surge. Biden pulled out precipitously. Obama responded weakly to Vladimir Putin's annexation of Crimea. Biden is all in for Ukraine. I'm going to question that soon, later in the show. Obama talked about a pivot to Asia. Biden's doing that. Obama detested Netanyahu. Biden says they've been friends for more than 30 years. BB, I love you. I don't agree with a damn thing you say. Biden claims to have told him. Obama would agree with the second sentence, but die a thousand deaths before uttering the first. That's the point. Obama wants Netanyahu out. Obama hates Israel as it exists today. Obama's a mouthpiece for the Palestinians. And Obama brought in the people who wanted to build up Iran. You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. If you turn off your radio and open the window, you can probably hear him straight from the studio. Call Mark Levin at 877-381-3811. What has Liz Cheney ever done for the country? I'm quite serious. She's lived off her name, Cheney, in the Republican Party. That's how she got elected in the first place in Wyoming. Nobody knew who Liz Cheney was. What has Liz Cheney actually done? Prior to her newfound popularity among the corrupt media, she hadn't done anything for the country. Oh, she saved us. Over at Breitbart, Liz Cheney, Trump election would be end of the republic. We are, quote, sleepwalking into a dictatorship. Says who? Liz Cheney. I so regret defending this family because I thought they were so horribly abused, and they were by the left and the media. She hated Trump from day one. Why? Because Donald Trump did not share her father's foreign policy agenda. Now, whether he did or not, that doesn't mean to try and destroy the man. So she never bought into that. Fine. How much you want to bet she'll back Nikki Haley in two seconds? Because Nikki Haley is that kind of a Republican. She's a Liz Cheney Republican. John Dickerson. John Dickerson is a radical left-wing Democrat who's helped destroy his phony profession. They even had to move him out. But there he is interviewing Liz Cheney. You say Donald Trump, if he's re-elected, will end the Republic. What do you mean? Isn't that an incredible question, Mr. Producer? Very tough. He told us what he will do. It's very easy to see the steps that he will take. People who say, well, if he's elected, he's not that dangerous because we have all these checks and balances. Don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans of Congress today have been co-opted. One of the things that we see happening today is a sort of sleepwalking into a dictatorship in the United States. Checks and balances. See, the presumption is that Donald Trump is Hitler. Donald Trump was president. He adhered to the Constitution. He had more conservative policies than Bush Cheney did. He signed an executive order, by the way, that is used today by Jewish students and their lawyers to defend themselves against anti-Semitism on college campuses. He wanted to secure the border. Of course, the Chamber of Commerce Republicans hate that. 
See, Donald Trump represents and represented mainstream USA. I called him, and Don Jr., of course, picked this off, but I called him, remember this, Mr. Producer, a blue-collar billionaire? Because that's what he is. And he's worked with blue-collar, hard-working Americans his entire life. You know, when Donald Trump bought Mar-a-Lago, the restrictions for Jews and blacks still existed, and he immediately eliminated them. Immediately. You don't hear about these things. Now he's such a bigot, don't you know? Why? He used the word vermin. His daughter married a Jew. She converted to Orthodox Judaism. You know Scarborough, those religious zealots. His grandchildren there are Jewish. For go to Israel today, he could be elected prime minister. But they call him Hitler. The newspaper, whose correspondent in Berlin was sympathetic to Hitler in the Third Reich, the newspaper that covered up the Holocaust, the New York Times, they don't call that paper the paper of Hitler, but it was and is the paper of Hitler. No, Donald Trump, you see, because Liz Cheney says so. Liz Cheney is an evil person. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she did on that committee. She knows how she worked the testimony. Now we have video that's missing. We have testimony that's missing. Apparently, one-third to one-half of the information they gathered, they erased. We have a federal judge in Washington who's trying to put Donald Trump in prison during the course of the election. She won't even allow Donald Trump access to that information, despite these rulings by these judges. All Democrats. All Democrats. And so they're going to use her, the useful idiot that she is, like they do Kingsinger, who now is a grifter, I believe, on CNN, and Ken Buck, who will be a grifter on CNN, because CNN is not a media enterprise. It's a political enterprise. It is an appendage to the Democrat Party. That's what it is. That's why it hires Democrats like Jake Tapper. MSNBC, same thing, but worse. They actually hire Marxists and Islamicists. They actually hire a guy like Al Sharpton, given his record. Person who spews and has spewed even before she was in the media anti-Semitism, bigotry, racism, Joy Reid. They hire somebody like Joe Scarborough, who's a wannabe, wants to be in the crowd, you know. And everybody knows I'm right. None of this is fiction. It's all fact. So she will be pushed and pushed hard by all the media outlets. And I want to congratulate Brian Stelter, fat little slob. Brian Stelter cannot get Fox off of his 7 IQ cranium. He just can't. So he writes another book about Fox. You know how many books he sold in the first week, Mr. Producer? 3,500, give or take. Give or take. I mean, it's better than Chris Christie did when his book came out. He sold like 2,200. And they go on these same shows. But Cheney will do well. Because she's written a book for the purpose of selling it to the radical Marxist left-wing zombies. And I would say to Liz Cheney, you like Biden's foreign policy? How's that going? You like how Biden's hollowing out the United States military? You've always been a fraud. You claim to be a hawk. You're no hawk. Hawk? You're Tweety Bird. You're a fraud. She's also an egomaniac. I remember when she wanted to take on the incumbent Republican senator in Wyoming. Came on this program. Had us all fooled. But the polling showed she'd get whipped by this guy. She desperately wanted to be a senator, so she pulled back and ran for the House. 
Daddy's name wasn't enough to carry you over the over the finish line for the Senate. Now she's there, a voice of righteousness, a voice of consciousness, a voice of morality. She's a contemptible, evil manipulator. That's what she is. Donald Trump's not going to be Hitler. Donald Trump's not going to be a dictator. Donald Trump's not going to violate the Constitution. What Donald Trump will do is try and unravel Washington, D.C., where the Cheneys have lived most of their life and where the media lives and lives and lives like rats in a sewer. And they don't want Donald Trump. For that matter, they don't want DeSantis. They don't want anybody who's capable of actually unraveling Washington and giving the government back to the people. Main Street. Main Street. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. So here we go again, another panel of Democrats dressed up as judges in Washington, D.C. In that, in that district court, you might recall that Harry Reid, Barack Obama, expanded the number of judges on that court and put Democrats on it. And this is the result that you get, these Stalinist-type uh, judicial outcomes. They're destroying the judiciary. They're destroying the office of the presidency, all because they want to bankrupt, imprison, and destroy Trump. Listen to this one. Reuters, of course, a U.S. appeals court on Friday ruled that Donald Trump must face civil lawsuits over his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol by his supporters, rejecting the former president's claim that he is immune. Now, let's stop right there. It's not the whole court. It's a panel of three judges. And I read through this Reuters piece, and they don't tell you if they're Democrats or Republicans. That means they're all Democrats, or most of them are, majority, because otherwise they would say appointed by Republicans. That's number one. Number two, think of the idiocy of this for any politician or any former president or any president who's going to be a former president. You now open a liability. If your supporters go and do something and there's no direct nexus, there's just one that's claimed, one that's implied, one that's repeated, you're now subject to endless number of civil suits. So look, if you're Donald Trump, you've got these Democrat judges in New York, trying to steal all of your property and trying to prevent you from ever doing business in New York again, even though there's no fraud, there's no complaining, the banks are saying they got paid, everything's fine, it doesn't matter. They dust off a law that nobody's used before. Now, in Washington, D.C., they're saying, you know what? Any number of people can bring lawsuits. The cops on January 6th, the members of Congress on January 6th. Maybe there was a waiter, you know, getting a hamburger to Nancy Pelosi. He can bring, Anyone can make a claim in civil court in Washington, D.C. federal court, claiming God knows how much against Donald Trump. So the floodgates are open. Now, but Trump has gag orders on the criminal case. Better be quiet about what's going on in In New York, Trump, you better be quiet. So say Democrats on appeal. In Washington, D.C., a Democrat panel, two Obama appointees, one Biden appointee. And how does this happen? It's the inner cities. 
It's Democrat strongholds. That's where they're bringing the cases. And this is what needs to be broken up. This is what needs to be fixed. And if Trump's elected president, he needs to fix it. And that's why Liz Cheney's nervous. Oh, we're going to have a dictatorship. It's going to be unbelievable. Can I ask you folks a question real quick? All these people saying that if Trump's elected, it's Hitler and Mussolini. It's Stalin. We're going to have a dictatorship. People are going to be in prison. People are going to be executed. Let me ask you a question. How many of them have bought homes overseas? Almost none of them. Why? If they really believe that sort of thing is going to happen, why aren't they all now flooding the overseas markets to purchase homes all over the world to get out? I mean, you don't want Hitler and Mussolini all in one. Worse than Hitler. You don't want to be imprisoned and executed. You don't want all these. This is how sick it is. They're such lying scum, and they get national platforms by these corporatists and these phony, fraudulent judges who are Democrats who are playing games with our constitutional system. The Democrat Party has already said they reject the Constitution. It was written by white slaveholders. They reject our history. It goes back to 1619. They've destroyed our entire foundation, our principles, our culture while they claim to be defending them. And that's how they're going to run. That's how they hope to get Biden reelected. They're going to go out there and corner the market on Depends so he doesn't wet himself in public. They're going to get that cream so he can make sure his uh, dentures don't fall out. He's already got the cornrow on the top of his head, so that's been taken care of. They're going to get him special shoes so when he shuffles he doesn't fall down. Well, we've got an hour left. And unlike others, I keep my foot on the gas pedal. I don't kick my feet up. No, no, no. We're plowing ahead. There's a lot more to talk about that affect your lives in this country. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I've been remiss in telling you that we have two killer shows this weekend on Fox on Life, Liberty, and Levin, and I really hope you'll watch them. If you can't watch them, you can set your DVR now. 8 p.m. Eastern, of course. Saturday's show, it's a killer opening statement, if I say so myself. We also have General Jack Keane and Senator Tom Cotton, so it's going to be very hard-hitting. Our focus is going to be, in part, on Biden and Blinken. Sunday night show, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, same time, same place, same format, different guests, different opening statement, another killer opening statement. Former ambassador from the United States under Trump to Israel, David Friedman, great guy, and our friend Lee Zeldin, former congressman, he should have been governor of New York. Folks, you really aren't going to want to miss these shows, seriously. Seriously. I mean, I'm going to be there whether you're not there or not. I'm just saying these are going to be absolutely killer shows. Now, keep something in mind. Come the holidays, what is it, in about uh, two, three weeks, I won't be doing shows on Fox for several weeks. So if you want to see these shows on a contemporary basis, on a real live basis, you'll want to watch the next couple of weekends. Because after that, well, there's going to be reruns. That's with all of us. So I want to encourage you, while you can, watch these shows Saturday night, Sunday night. I know you're going to love them. Keep listening to radio. I know you're going to love it. And I don't think anybody... And there are others who work very, very hard. I just don't think there's anybody who works any harder than I do to try and bring information to you 
analysis. When we have guests here, it's not often. And of course, on the Fox program, where every show has about 1,700 guests, I have two. Sometimes I'll have one. Life, Liberty, and Levin on Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central. You know what time it is where you live. Please don't miss it. If you're not sure, you're going to have this really great college game. Go ahead and set your DVR. That's what they're for. Record it. And same with Sunday night. 8 p.m. Eastern. You know, Sunday night, I'm about to get 60 minutes. Sometimes this Yellowstone show. And Sunday night football. And we're still number one, Mr. Producer, on all cable news. It's like this slot on radio, 6 to 9 p.m. Whenever there's sports, I'm up against it. Whether it's the Mets and the Yankees in New York or you name it. The Devils, the Rangers. Again, this is just New York. I'm talking about all over the country. And, of course, your own lives. You know, I like to eat. Or Susie has a player, whatever. So I take these, these slots where nobody else can or has succeeded. And we succeed. Why? Because we're in this together. Because we have a lot in common. Because I speak forthrightly. I don't play games. That's why. And you listen forthrightly. You don't play games either. You're a tough crowd, and that's great. My buddy, Tim Sumner, sums it up. Rashida Tlaib, Democrat, Marxist, American hater, Jew hater, Hamas lover. She just posted, the images coming out of Gaza are horrific. Netanyahu has resumed, she hates Netanyahu like Scarborough, they have a lot in common those two. Netanyahu has resumed his genocidal bombing campaign. Now, by the way, if Netanyahu wanted to do a genocidal bombing campaign, it'd be over already. You wouldn't even have to send the IDF in there. Be done. Be over. We need a permanent ceasefire, she says, now. End the apartheid, free Palestine. Now, of course, she doesn't say that her side, the terrorist side, the Hamas side, has said they're never going to stop. She hasn't told her side, the Islamo-Nazi Iranian side in Tehran, to stop attacking American soldiers, has she? No. But my buddy Tim Sumner, Army vet, good man, he posted an answer. End Hamas from the river to the sea. I like that, Mr. Bidus. Now, how can you say, I, I mean, the Gaza Strip was Egyptian. So how do you end apartheid when it comes to the Gaza Strip? The Israelis say, let your people go. Egypt, open the gate. Let people go. Apartheid. This is something the radical South African government's come up with, which experienced horrendous apartheid for hundreds of years. And now they have used that phrase. It started about uh, 20 years ago. They've used that phrase against Israel. It's an apartheid regime. It's been picked up by the Hamas network. It's been picked up by the Soros networks. It's been picked up by all the radical leftist entities and regurgitated. Now, permanent ceasefire, isn't that strange? What does that mean? Does that mean Hamas is going to stop raping and killing and maiming? It's going to stop shoving little babies in ovens and decapitating them? Is that what that means? No. It means Israel surrenders and Israel continues to be victimized in horrific ways. That's what it means. So Rashida Tlaib remains in Congress and this guy Santos is out. Tell me, which is a greater threat to the American people? Which is a greater threat to liberty, to humanity? This guy Santos, who sounds like and looks like a schmuck, or Rashida Tlaib, the special pleader for Middle East terrorists? Oh, yeah, I said it, and I mean it, and I can prove it. Which is a greater threat? And by the way, the hypocrisy of the Democrats and the media, this guy Santos... Look, I, I don't know anything about this guy. I don't give a damn about him. That's not the point. But there's Menendez sitting in the U.S. Senate. An armless long of indictments. Now, for all I know, he's innocent. 
I don't know. Guy's got gold bars in his home that people gave to him, Egyptians and others. Doesn't that happen with everybody, Mr. Producer? But that said, you don't even wait for somebody to be convicted before you expel them? I would have voted no to expulsion. No. Because these dummies in Congress have now lowered the bar where a representative of a particular community or representative of people can now be expelled if they get a bad ethics committee report or if they're charged by the United States government. Which I don't even trust anymore, quite frankly, in so many ways. Santos. There's Menendez. Notice the Democrats, they will never push Menendez out. Not until they replace him. They need that vote. Then you have all these rhinos. They want to show you how righteous they are. We're going to get Santos out. What about the, he's not convinced. That doesn't matter. Look at this. The guy lied. He did this. I know, but he has to be, you know, convicted. Nah, we're not waiting for that. They're all a bunch of candy asses because the truth is they're worried about their own butts. And they want to be able to go home, particularly some of these New York Republicans. You see, I stood up to this. I stood up to my own party. And you know what that's going to get you? Nothing. Defeated. Defeated. Stupid. The people who voted against us aren't defending Santos. They're defending due process. They're defending the institution of Congress. But it doesn't matter anymore. Wait until you hear about little Dick Durbin. I'm going to get to him in a little bit, how he's destroying the judiciary, how he's using... Uh, you know, Stalinist tactic. This guy is sinister. Contemptible. But aren't they all? Aren't they all? Yeah, they pretty much are. In fact, let me get to that now. Let's see if I can find that now. Because this is very, very important. What's been taking place? Let me see here. Now, hold on. Oh, here we are. The Senate Judiciary Committee. It's, a, it's funny. They give themselves these cool names. We're the Judiciary Committee. No, you're not. The Judiciary Committee? It's a weird name for what you're doing. You should be the Clown Show Committee. You want to hear the ins and outs of this, folks? The Senate Judiciary Committee has been destroying the Supreme Court. They've been taking reports from this group ProPubica, a.k.a. ProPublica, which is funded by left-wing billionaire Democrats, which goes into these disclosure reports and otherwise, and they say, look, 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 Clarence Thomas took this trip and got this money over here, and, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, there's more. Look at Sam Alito. Oh, and, and, and Neil Gorsuch, the three, look at them. And, of course, Sotomayor is the biggest money-grubbing, unethical, Member of the United States Supreme Court. Probably ever. Using taxpayer dollars and staff to promote her book, to set up talking events, complaining about not getting enough money or not having enough people there. It's really sleazy. But they're not interested in her. Let me tell you what happened the other day. The Republicans invoked the two-hour rule. These are rules that they have in order to function. So the markup ended at noon. So in other words, there they are sitting, and they said, all right, we, we were invoking the two-hour rule, so you have two hours to mark up whatever it is you want to come out of this committee. Little Dick Durbin has psychological issues. He always has. So. Look. When you're as wide as you are tall, that, that becomes an issue. I'm not, I'm not putting people down. But when you're built like a uh, kumquat, you know, you get, uh, people have psychological issues. And so they want to take it out on somebody else. They want to show how tough they are. So little Dick Durbin started with nominations, debate, and votes. And they took until 11.45 a.m. Of course, the Republicans weren't able to speak. 
you know, they support democracy, the Democrats, democracy. Everywhere you look, they're promoting democracy and constitutionalism. Then Durbin, after all that, he turns to these subpoenas. He wants to subpoena Leonard Leo, one of the head muckety-mucks of the Federalist Society, because he wants to destroy Leonard Leo and the Federalist Society. That's a private organization that they're targeting, like the National Rifle Association, targeting them. They don't do this to the left. But suddenly, Leonard Leo is public enemy number one. Ah, wow, I wonder what Liz Cheney thinks about that one. So they try to intimidate him. They try to kill the donors to the Federalist Society. They try to destroy his business. But they favor democracy. Trump's the problem. So Durbin turns to these subpoenas. And the debate started on the committee. They were about to turn to amendments, but the clock was getting very close to noon. You know, they have the two-hour rule. At 11.58, two minutes before the witching hour, Dick Durbin cut off the debate. No amendments had yet been offered by the Republicans. And he called a vote on the subpoena resolution. In other words, he's muscling this thing through. He cuts off the Republicans, gags the... They like gags, these uh, Democrats. They like to gag everybody. Now we know that the Biden administration was working with YouTube to shut everybody up and shut them down. I mean, you talk about Marxist fascism. You talk about... These people are dripping in it while they point the finger at everybody else, which is typical of Leninist, Trotsky, like Maoists. That's typical. All the Republicans were fed up, so they walked out, except Lindsey Graham. Senator Graham, the ranking uh, Republican on the committee, he objected to the vote. Objected to vote under the Senate Judiciary Committee regulations. Which requires a vote of 11 members, including at least one member of the minority party. To cut off debate and bring a matter to a vote. So you know what Durbin said? Well, we have a long tradition here of, you know, using this rule, the Senate rule. But I am suspending it. How do you like that, Mr. Producer? I'm going to suspend it. The Republicans, they need to shut up. We're going to vote on subpoenas, even without the number that's required. I'm going to suspend the rule that allows minority participation. We don't need the minority. I've decided to suspend them. We're past the two-hour rule. I don't care about the two-hour rule. I don't care about any of the rules. I want Leonard Leo's head on a pike. So the vote began, the clock struck noon, and guess what happened? People were watching this on the web, Mr. Producer. And they ordered the webcast to be cut off. So they violated two Senate rules. They gagged the Republicans. They went over time on the clock. They eliminated the need for a minority vote. On a subpoena. He unilaterally suspends that rule. They vote on the subpoenas. And the website cuts off. The public can't view it anymore. And Durbin goes out and he lies to the constipated news network. And tells them, oh, the vote occurred before noon. He's a liar. But then again, they all are. This is very, very serious. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Liz Cheney is very worried about the end of the republic should uh, Donald Trump get the nomination. Let me ask you folks a question. Does anybody remember Lynn Cheney talking about the Biden administration using the FBI and other federal law enforcement to go after parents at school board meetings? 
Has she been a voice against the use of SWAT teams to go after pro-lifers who haven't done anything wrong? People who exercise their free speech too close to an abortion clinic? Well, where else are you going to exercise it? In front of an IHOP? Anybody remember her objecting to the FBI talking about infiltrating the Catholic Church? Has Liz Cheney stood up for the women being raped and sold into sex slavery and the kids too on the southern border? Has Liz Cheney spoken out against the assault on the Supreme Court, Supreme Court members right now taking place in our country by the Democrat Party? Is Liz Cheney worried about how Joe Biden issued $400 million in waivers for student loan pay? I can make the list. Liz Cheney's very worried about democracy, you know. Mark Levin, tough as hell. That's why I like Mark Levin. And I'm not sure a lot of people like him. He's tough as hell. But I like him. I love him. Call in now. 877-381-3811. All right. Yesterday on Capitol Hill. You know, I've told you before, the late, great Senator Paul Laxalt. He was a senator from Nevada. He'd been a governor before that. He was the closest politician to Ronald Reagan. They had neighboring states that were governors at the same time. And he would confide in Laxalt, and Laxalt would confide in him. Just a terrific man, and he and I became very, very friendly. He became a mentor to me. And uh, he's passed away since, but uh, just a great guy. Adam Laxalt. Fantastic is his grandson, by the way. You have this guy, Representative Dan Goodman. Dan, excuse me, Goldman. Dan Goldman was in the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York. And this tells me that the quality and level of professionalism and intelligence in that office isn't what it's claimed to be. It is very low. Goldman is a, another detestable hack. His entire purpose for existing as a member of Congress is to, uh, is to run interference for the Democrat Party mob. And you know what? I shouldn't even call them the mob. The mob is more honest and less less damage to our country systemically than the Democrat Party. The biggest enemy we have really is the Democrat Party as an institution. That's why I wrote the book about it. And by the way, Mr. Producer, remind everybody, and can we post a place where people can go to get a signed edition? We're running out of books and we're running out of time for the holidays. Can you post that and then... And then remind me where that is. Because, folks, there's a limited first edition signed copy of the book. LevinSigned.com. L-E-V-I-N Signed.com. I know if you're a regular listener, your family's going to love this book. And I'm not doing signings anymore. I didn't do that many to begin with. LevinSigned.com. Is that it? L-E-V-I-N signed, S-I-G-N-E-D dot com, LevinSign dot com. It's Friday evening. I mean, for all I know, they'll be sold out by the weekend. I don't know. But I do know they do sell out, so you need to act quickly. Anyway, this guy, Goldman, is just another pig. Michael Schellenberger voted for Biden, but he regrets it. He's a Democrat, I think, still. But the point is, Democrat or not, he believes in free speech. And he and Talibi and Weiss and others have worked very, very hard, particularly in recent months, in the last year or so, to explain to we the people the danger our free speech is facing and the power of the federal government, the central government, particularly under Biden, to steal it from us. To abuse it. And so what do they do? They, they abuse Schellenberger. They abuse Talibi. They even send an IRS agent to his door and open an audit. Oh, that's just by chance. Come on. These are police state tactics. It's sickening. 
And it's going on in our country right now. Right, Liz? Liz Cheney's very worried. If Donald Trump's the nominee, well, we'll lose our country. We are losing our country, you idiot. You self-aggrandizing, self-righteous buffoon. I feel better now. Dan Goldman, at a hearing yesterday, the, re- the reprobate. Michael Schellenberger, Mr. First Amendment. Here we go. Cut 25. Go. You've talked about the Hunter Biden laptop and how the FBI knew it existed. You are aware, of course, that the uh, laptop, so to speak, was actually, that was published in the New York Post, was actually a hard drive that the New York Post admitted here was not authenticated as real. It was not the laptop the FBI had. You're aware of that, right? It was the same contents. How do you know? Because... (laughs) Because it's the same, I mean, it's, you would have to authenticate it to know it was the same, the same contents. contents. You have no idea. You know hard drives can that be it's a conspiracy? manipulated. Are you suggesting the New York Post participated in a conspiracy to construct the contents of the Hunter Biden laptop? <laughs> no, sir. The problem is that hard drives can be manipulated by Rudy Giuliani or Russia. But what's the evidence that that and happened? What's well, there the is actual evidence of it, but the point is it's There's not no the same evidence thing. Thing. So you're engaging in a conspiracy. I'm glad theory. you agree with me, Mr. Schellenberger, that transparency is the most important thing. And my last question for you is, do you think it would be transparent if Hunter Biden came to this Congress and testified in a public hearing and more transparent than if he testified privately? It's, I mean, literally, I've never thought about that. I have no idea. <laughs> You don't I've know? literally never thought about is that. Public the testimony time, more I mean, transparent than private testimony? Here. Are you familiar with the First Mr. Amendment? Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The Congress shall take it, no action it, to abridge freedom of speech. Yeah. And, and that's what you just described. Yeah, it's amazing to me. They want public testimony. Remember when Donald Trump went in to give the public testimony? The January 6th committee? They said no. Remember witness after witness that they took into the back room on the Russia collusion testimony? Remember that, Mr. Bedusa? They wouldn't allow those witnesses to testify in public? The January 6th committee cherry-picked which witnesses would testify in public. There were witnesses who were subpoenaed said, I'll only do it if it's in public. No, you'll do what we tell you to do. And they went to the back room, you know. Don't you despise these people? I mean, I despise them. These are not adversaries. This is the enemy. These are not good people. These are evil people with power who are trying to destroy our system, destroy our language, destroy our culture, to crash the whole thing from within. These aren't political opponents. These are opponents of America and Americans. I don't care what they wrap themselves in. This is who they are. The Democrat Party, as I wrote in the Democrat Party Hates America, which sold more books in three seconds than, than uh, Stelter, by the way, but that's just me. This is not a political party. It's an autocratic, totalitarian entity that doesn't seek to fight fair and square politics, votes, as a, it seeks to devour the system. It seeks to destroy the system. It seeks to empower itself so we have one-party rule. It's devoured the media. The Jake Tappers, the Wolf Blitzers, the Andrea Mitchells, all the rest of them. They know who they are. I know who they are. And it's not just them. The New York Times, Maggie Haberman, she knows what she is. They all know what they are. They're Democrats. Radical Democrats. Most of whom hate the country while they pretend they're defending the First Amendment. No, they're not. They were fed lies by the Democrats and the Obama administration, intelligence agencies out of the White House, Department of Justice, the FBI, and they used them and created this whole Russia collusion lie. They know who they are. They know what they are. We all do. They think it's a game. It's not a game. It's shockingly disgusting. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin.
in your honor every Friday. America. Here we go. bless each and every one of you stay strong rest up and don't forget to watch life liberty and levin 8 p.m on saturday 8 p.m sunday eastern see you tomorrow